Whenever you hear about the strong and valiant woman referred to in sacred scripture, you cannot but think of Our Lady as being that strong and valiant woman that scripture so highly praises because she is the strongest and the most valiant because she is the Immaculate Conception. For she is the fortified tower. She is that, that strong armament, that strong tower that God has established in our midst to be our defense, to be the place where the faithful can always run to. And who, she's the strong and valiant woman because she was given a very difficult vocation to be not only the mother of God, but the mother of sorrows. And only the Immaculate Conception, the woman who is conceived without original sin from the first moment of her conception, could truly fulfill that vocation. To carry that great cross that our Lord gave to his mother when he asked her to become his mother. To stand at the foot of the cross, to unite herself with his son's work of redemption. For the Immaculate Conception of Our Lady is truly the grace that is most perfectly tied to our redemption. You know, when we look at the miraculous medal, which is the medal of the Immaculate Conception, you see that very clearly. That medal is such a catechetical tool. It's a little catechism in the round, and then it has the glorious mysteries on the front. Our Lady of Grace the woman clothed with the sun with the moon under her feet and a crown of 12 stars. On the back is the 12 stars, but you see also the cross and the M, showing that the Immaculate Conception is the greatest fruit of our Lord's work, that from the, of the foreseen merits of Christ's death on the cross, Our Lady was conceived immaculate and uh, without the stain of original sin and full of grace. Every time we pray the Hail Mary, we are reminded of Our Lady's Immaculate Conception when we refer to her as full of grace. That is a positive way of looking at who Our Lady is. If you're full of grace, there's no place for sin. And she was full of grace from the first moment of her conception. And this reality of Our Lady's Immaculate Conception is something that ought to really ring home to us who are members of this great land of the United States. For the Immaculate Conception was declared a dogma of the faith after the American bishops back in the 1840s petitioned Pius IX, now blessed Pius IX, to, to have Our Lady named as the patroness of our great land. And uh, they were inspired, I'm sure, by Our Lady herself to petition the Holy Father before the dogma was even proclaimed to ask him to make Our Lady as the Immaculate Conception the patroness of our land. And it is interesting to note that Pius the, the Ninth says that one of the reasons that, you might say, the grace that he got from the American bishops asking for that grace for our country was that he realized he needed to proclaim the Immaculate Conception a dogma of the faith. So in one sense, we can thank our bishops and thank our nation as being an instrument of grace that God used the United States and its, and its bishops to petition the Holy Father to make Our Lady as the Immaculate Conception, our patroness of our great land. And I think that when we look at our nation and all the many blessings that we have received as a nation, it must definitely be because of that, that we are one of the greatest, most blessed nations in the history of the world. It's not because of our Republican or Democratic parties or system. It definitely isn't because of that. It isn't because of our free enterprise or capitalistic system. The reason why our nation has been blessed throughout the ages with such great material blessings, freedom, uh, the, the, the opportunities that we've had as a nation most definitely stems from the many blessings that we have received because Our Lady blessed us, as she even said in that apparition to, to Sister Mary Ephraim of that apparition called Our Lady of America. 
She said to her that that is one of the things that, you know, that pleased Our Lady that we asked her to be our patroness. And she was going to bless us. You know, we have the beautiful shrine to the Immaculate Conception as a, as a tribute to Our Lady's patroness and patronage of our great land. And I think that to, in one sense, you know, we sometimes jokingly, and but half jokingly because we're serious about it too, is that we would like someday to see Our Lady uh, really enshrined in our nation more so than it, she is. And uh, especially we refer sometimes that we'd like to see the United States of America to become the United States of the Immaculate. But you know, in many cases, that's already the case because she's been named the patroness of our land. You could say that our nation should be the United States of the Immaculate. For we should honor her and our patroness who has obtained so many graces for our great land that we should even honor her even more so. And I think as we look at our nation and the great evils that await us or that we face as Catholics and as God-fearing men and women, that we need to turn to her again as the strong and valiant woman to come to the aid of our great land. That uh, maybe the thing that the great grace that may come from, from the situation that our, the church will face is that Hopefully the bishops today, imitating their predecessors, will turn to Our Lady in a very forceful and very strong way and ask her once again, maybe consecrate our great land as the bishops of this country to Our Lady's Immaculate Conception to ask her because really the situation that stands before us requires supernatural help, requires grace from heaven to turn this nation around from the course that it's heading over the, over the, not a fiscal cliff, but the moral cliff. That's the cliff that I'm more worried about. Not the fact that we're gonna run out of money or we're gonna be broke, but that spiritually and morally we are bankrupt. That's the worst cliff that we don't wanna go off. And we've been heading down that slippery slope since Roe versus Wade, since we've accepted contraception as, you know, kind of like we think that it's uh, the greatest thing since buttered bread. You know, in many cases, people think that they can't live without that. All these moral evils that face our nation are pushing it over the brink of no return as a nation if we continue as we are. Even Mother Teresa of Calcutta said that a nation that aborts its children will not continue to exist. And so the moral cliff that we're heading for is a much greater thing to be concerned about. Um, Cardinal Burke was here this week giving a priest retreat and he said one of the last things that our nation has looked up to by people in Europe is that they look to America and they're kind of perplexed by the fact that Americans still believe in God for the majority. You know, in Europe, they're very secular, very atheistic, the church attendance in Europe, even in the great Catholic nations that were once Catholic of Italy, the church attendance on Sunday is probably less than 5% of the Catholics, let alone anybody else. And they look at the United States and they marvel that, you know, Catholics or the percentage of Catholics going to church in the United States is probably between 20 and 30%. And they are looking to us and wondering, well, you know, they kind of admire the United States, he said, because of they still seem to have this religious sense to them. And he said, you know, maybe the last thing that we have to offer to the world is not our economic leadership, but maybe the challenge that faces our nation and, and the opportunity, our vocation, that Our Lady even said to Sister Mary Ephraim was that we could be a moral leader in the world. Obviously, we have done much to be an immoral leader in the world. We promoted through Hollywood so much filth and garbage and this secular way of life that really Our Lady wants to take the United States, maybe like a St. Paul, and convert us, that we'll become one of the greatest protagonists for moral uprightness. And as Catholics in this country, we have to stand fast with the church, 
with the gospel. And we have to be like Our Lady, that strong and valiant woman. And we'll only be strong and valiant if we remain faithful to God's grace. We're faithful to the church, faithful to the teaching of the church as taught by the church, not by interpreted by individual Catholics or by some heretic. So this is the challenge that faces us, you know, as we have these, the HHS mandate is an opportunity for Catholics to say, I will not serve the false god of secular humanism. I will not serve the devil, but rather I will serve God. I will serve God as he has made known to me through the teachings of the church. Our Lady is that beacon of hope. The fact that she's the patroness of our land should give us great confidence that we should turn to her in a special way. And hopefully our bishops, like their predecessors before them, will not see Our Lady as being an obstacle or being somehow, you know, being a distraction. But really, if we want to get where we need to be, we need to, as a nation, as a church in the United States, that goes from the top to the bottom, recognize Our Lady's role and honor her and ask her to come to our assistance as the United States Church, in the, the Roman Catholic Church in the United States, as individual Roman Catholics. We need to turn to her and ask her as we are celebrating especially this novena and we're in this special time of prayer, honoring Our Lady as our patroness, we need to once again renew our consecration to Our Lady and ask Our Lady to truly help our nation and our bishops to be that strong and valiant leaders, shepherds that we need in this time to lead us through the Red Sea as the Egyptians are chasing us, you know, that like uh, the fiery pillar and the cloud of column of smoke that led the Israelites through the Red Sea, Our Lady is the one who will lead us. Moses was there as, the, as only a guide, but his, he was following the, the column of smoke and the column of fire. That's the type of Our Lady. And we need to do that again or we will drown in the sea with the Egyptians if we don't. So today, as we honor Our Lady's Immaculate Conception, and especially as a, as a country that is dedicated to her, we should reconsecrate ourselves and ask that that grace be given to the bishops to consecrate our nation again in this time. Whenever the church has been in peril from its enemies, it's always run to Our Lady and ask her to come to our assistance and for her vocation as the Immaculate Conception is told to us in Genesis 3.15, I'll put enmity between thee and the woman, between her seed and yours. You shall strike at her heel and she shall crush your head. We need Our Lady to come to our assistance to crush the head of Satan in our world today, to crush the lies, the falsehood, those who are trying to dehumanize us, to make us just units instead of persons created in the image and likeness of God. We need to ask Our Lady to crush the falsehood of those who think that marriage is between two men and two women, to crush that lie that Satan is mocking marriage and he's mocking the church, Christ and his bride, and to ask Our Lady to crush the lie of abortion and contraception that is destroying images, children made in the image and likeness of God and the great blessing that children are to our land. If we don't do that, if we don't see that Our Lady has that role to play, then we need to ask for the grace to see it. And we need to do it as a nation to turn to Our Lady again in these times to come to our assistance and to assist us that we may truly be strong and valiant, lights to the nations, moral leaders in our world, because God did not give us the grace of faith so that we could hide it. As Pope Benedict is so well reminding us during this year of faith, we are to go out and proclaim the good news. And we have to proclaim it by standing fast to these truths. 
to these moral foundations upon which no nation can exist if they throw them away. Let us ask Mary Immaculate to come to our assistance, to pray to her with confidence, as Our Lady told St. Catherine Labore in the Miraculous Metal Apparition, to have confidence in her intercession and ask Our Lady to come to our assistance. She will do so, and it may astound us that it'll be probably in some way that we cannot even imagine. But Our Lady will do it in the proper way and the most appropriate way. And we need to just, like faithful children, call on her, have recourse to her. Recourse doesn't mean just ask once. It means to pester her with our, with our prayers, with our needs, and with our uh, supplications. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.